G'day, so I've got a drone in for repair and it has an issue with the gimbal. It's a bit of a weird one really because the gimbal works, um, but as soon as I um, arm the drone and um, get it ready to fly, um, the camera just kind of shuts down and yeah, I get errors in the console and all sorts of stuff. Um, so I did a bit of diagnosis uh, with my camera and gimbal, it works fine. Um, as soon as I put m either my gimbal with their camera or my camera with their gimbal, it still kind of played up. So I cleaned the connectors um, and it was kind of better. And then I found that uh, with their gimbal, um, it always played up. Uh, with their camera, uh, it was fine. So it's. So I have a feeling it's to do with. One of the uh, boards, one of the logic boards within the gimbal. Um, so I'm going to swap these out with a uh, pair that I have from another gimbal um, that I know was working. Um, it was actually involved in a crash um, and sustained some physical damage to the actual gimbal assembly. Um, so yeah, the board should be good. Um, so I'm going to swap them over and see if that makes a difference. I don't know what the size of these tools are, but one of them is just basically a really small Phillips head. <laughs> I had to go searching around the workshop to find a jeweler's that was actually that small. And in the end, I found it in a kit that I bought um, for phone repair. And it wasn't actually for phone repair. It was uh, more so I bought um, the glue, the T7000 glue that you need. Um, to put screens back onto things like the um, Hero 9, 10, 11, that sort of stuff. Um, anyway, so I found like a really small Phillips head. Probably looks quite big in the video, but, um, you know, compared to some of my normal ones, it's, uh, yeah, quite small. Anyway, so fairly straightforward. The first thing we want to do is we want to remove the two screws that let the uh, cover come off. So what we need to do, one of them, this was, this is why I needed such a small screwdriver because this one's actually recessed a fair way in. So we remove that guy. I probably need a dish to put all these in. Come on, mate, out you come. He's so close. He's, he's out, he's just been stubborn. Uh, where was the other one? One there. Oh, yeah, one there. This one's not recessed, so... This one's fairly simple to um, remove. That's one out. Where's this guy coming out? I don't think he's playing on... Yeah, there he comes. So we'll put them aside. Don't lose them. One and two. Uh, and then I need to remove these two uh, torque screws off the top. And basically I was lucky that my smallest torque screw driver uh, was good enough to do that. And then we should just be able to slide that off. Righto, so there we have, there's one board. Now, what we need to do is we need to disconnect this guy. And these, these, these foam bits are really important because when the bit sits on top, it obviously holds it down to make sure it's in the connector. So that's one. And then we've got the second guy in the middle, and then we've got a small uh, ribbon cable as well. This is where it gets a bit tricky, because once we disconnect these cables, we then need to undo these three screws. Now, for this, um, once again, I had to dig into the um, phone repair kit to find a star driver that was the right size. So... Come on. Yeah. 
actually, I didn't use that. I used this guy. That's why it's not coming out at all. So this was out of a totally different set. This was one of those multi job sets that you get that just has one of everything in it. Okay, I'm gonna leave that last screw in because I want to just pop that other connector before I go too far. Cool. And then I just want to pop this power cable, which can be a bit tricky to get into. So you get all these other guys out of the way, and then I can, yep, cool, that one's off as well. So I will now take out this other screw. Now we can take this board out. So this board actually plugs into the other board. So see these two boards here, they basically sit like that. And as you can see, they have a little clip in the middle which locks them together and there's also another cable plugged in under that board so yeah she is uh, somewhat of a pain but I'm sure we'll get there I should have grabbed my tweezers because I now need to get this board out somehow and with all these cables kicking around it's uh not the easiest job in the world. Because I need to unplug it from the other board. And it doesn't want to unplug. What I need is just a little... It's not going to go far enough down, I don't think. Oh, you might need something we can get down there. Twist under that board. Let me shorten him a little bit. I reckon he will probably do the trick. Right, oh. So I can get him under the board. Oop, come on. There we go. She's unplugged. <laughs> With a bit of luck, she'll come out. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Righto. So that's the top board. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the faulty ones up there. The good ones are down here. Righto, a couple of screws in this guy. And then we should be able to remove that bottom connector. If you know the significance of TP1, because that screw was labelled TP1, if you know the significance of that, drop it in the comments. It'd be interesting to know how many people actually know the significance of TP1. I reckon there'd be a few out there. Blake Edwards, you don't need to tell us, mate. You know. Same with Ken. Okay. So those three are out. So nothing, nothing should be holding this board in. I've got the three screws out, and it should just be a matter of lifting it out. Uh, come on, there you come. There you go. And as you can see, there's another connector on the bottom, and there's another piece of foam. So you could also do this if you've got a faulty uh, USB-C on it, which could could be the issue with this one. Okay, so what I want to do, I'm going to put that up on the faulty pile. I want to grab this guy straight away. Now you'll notice that 
uh, there is an arrow. There's a white arrow on each board. So there's a white arrow there and a white arrow there. The significance of that is that is pin one. So those two pin ones need to go together like that. Right. Now I just need to get this board in and screw it down and we should be right. <laughs> Definitely should have got my tweezers out. So this one does have a locating lug. It's just a matter of getting him on there. But it is small and fiddly. And I've, I trust me, I've got small hands. Should be an easy job. If you got big sausage fingers, you could be in with a bit of fun. Actually, that's not a locating lug. It just looks like one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it in around about the right spot. Oh, you know, it is a locating lug. I was looking at the wrong screw hole. No wonder I could never get it there. Righto. So that's there. First screw. Let's go. And I'm glad that I, this has got a magnetic tip on it because otherwise that would get me getting lost everywhere. Yeah, I was actually looking at the screw holes for the top board, not the bottom board. So, TP1 in. And then I'll cruise over TP2. Oh. Where'd you go? And then I'm going to rotate it around and move those cables out of the way and that slots into TP3 very nicely. Righto, we're making good progress. We are doing well people. Right, top board, here we go, top board. So remember there's got that connector. Once again, you'll see that there is the uh, white arrow and this board is orientated that way. So let's slide him in there. We'll line those connectors up and we will let's get those cables out of the way. Lock him in. Yep, that's in. Let's get some screws in to stop him wiggling around on the connector. Where's number three? I reckon that's no, nah, it's not number three. That's from the wrong pile. This guy will do. No, he's from he's the wrong screw. This guy. He's getting out of here. Okay, so let's. This guy's going to be fun. I probably should have put him on before I put the board in, but then I would probably never. Let me grab my pliers. Oh, my pliers. I'm just going to grab my tweezers, and they may or may not help me because there's a little bit of 
tension on it, kind of pulling it the other way. Come on, stop it. As bad as me kids. Just need to back him up a little bit. There, that's in. Next one we want to do is this little fella down here. He's in. And then big fella over the back. Righto, he's in. All right, so they're all in. Let's uh, get this guy on. Don't know how far back I need to go to. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. And what we need is two long Phillips head guys. This Phillips head screwdriver is so small, I actually need to look under the microscope. Sorry, it's not a microscope. Magnifying glass to see which one is the Phillips head. That is partly because I haven't got the best eyesight. But it is what it is, and you've got to do what you've got to do. I do have a magnif uh, I do have a microscope which I use for doing things like the barometers because um, they're about the size of a match head and they've got eight pins on them so those pins are quite close together so you need to check to see exactly what's going on because otherwise you're gonna bugger something up. Righto, what tool did these guys use this one? Righto, so this guy is back together. And it'll be interesting to see if this now works. I'm going to assume it will because the only other thing that's on it is the cage um, and some of these gimbly bits. But you know, if there's an issue with the camera connection here, you'd expect it just to play up all the time. Whereas this was when I armed it. It seemed like a logic thing. Um, so hopefully that's that. Right, I also got the camera and gimbal in. Let's uh, fire her up. Oh, uh, your booting. Looks good. Gimbal and camera there. USB connected. Let's just uh, wait for the status light to go green. So the issue was that uh, when I armed it and tried to take off, uh, the camera would instantly fail. So that's heaps better because it was taking ages uh, to um, actually go to a green status when it went green. Um, but yeah, what would happen is um, because I'm inside, I don't have GPS, so I need to um, go into expert mode. As soon as I went to take off, like now, Two, one. the motors would spin, the camera would die. The camera would actually go limp and beep uh, as if there was an issue. Uh, everything in the console looks good. It stopped because I didn't take off. Um, I've got no props on it. I'm inside. I don't want to be spinning the motors up with no load. Um, just a thing I yeah, don't like doing. Not awesome for them. Um, so yeah, this one looks good to go. I'll uh, get it back together and um, take it for a test flight.